Here we go. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to uh, this school year, 2023-2024, our first Vox Talk Cafe by Après Cool. And the Vox Talk Cafe is a, is a joint initiative between the Après Cool, between Proceed and between RECVT to give a space where vocational training teachers can chat about teaching a trade. A little word about the resources. So on the Après Cool SP website, there's a lot of resources that are being generated. There's the previous meetings recording, and there's also the standing collaborative documents. There's the agenda with, the, with, the, with our library of shared resources. Feel free to use them. They're there for everyone. So we will put um, the resources that we generate from this meeting in there, but definitely add the comment feature, add things that you want that you think would be good to share with the, with the network. This really is a collaborative space. Uh, there is a tutorial there, a quick little tutorial on how to add the community's meeting schedule to your calendar so you can be notified of when the different meetings are happening. For now, all the Vox Talk cafes are going to be on Monday from 3 to 4, and the themes will change. But it's a great way to keep, a, keep abreast of what's going on by having that calendar integrated into your work calendar. So definitely check out the Après Cool website as a resource. A little word, this is still a pilot project. This is going to be our third Vox Talk Café and Après Cool space. So your implication and suggestions are really important. It's a space for you. So speak up and everything you have to say is worth listening to. It doesn't mean we're going to change everything, but everybody's voice should be heard. Okay. So today's Vox Talk Cafe, September 11th, 2023, we are dealing with metallurgy and we are going to talk about training using augmented reality and welding. We have a special guest. We have James Byrne from the RACVT who's with us, who is the biggest fanboy of all things AR, VR, XR, everything. <laughs> and so he's a great person to talk to about this. And our goals for today, we want to explore some of the examples of augmented reality and share some of the AR technology used inside vocational training centers and in programs. We also want to highlight the benefits of using this inside vocational programs. And we want to identify some of the technologies that will be available for integration easily into the classroom and into your teaching practice. So just so we go over the session breakdown, uh, there's going to be like a 15 minute presentation by James on this theme topic. And uh, this part is recorded. After that, we have a 45 minute discussion period that isn't recorded, but where we're taking notes and pulling out key takeaways. So this is going to be the space where we go ahead and discuss some of our ideas and, and, and issues and curiosities about this topic. Then at the end, we also have the technology for teaching inspiration, which is a slide where we're going to where where the ACVT um, consultants are compiling some of their suggestions and some of your suggestions on way we can integrate some of the technologies mentioned in this, in, uh, in this presentation into our teaching practice. So the session's broken down into the two spaces. Any questions or comments before we get started? Everybody's super excited? All righty. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So James, I pass it over to you. Right on. Well, thank you very much, Robin. And uh, again, welcome, everybody. Um, just a quick introduction to myself. I'm James, and I'm the um, uh, educational consultant with Riverside School Board. And I have a mandate, a provincial mandate, with the RSC Vocational Training. Um, my colleague and uh, dear friend, uh, Marc Vizina, is also with me for the second year this year. And so together, uh, we do service the nine English school boards. And so if ever you have any, um, you know, technical uh, questions or you would like to reach out to us, we can we can for sure get you our contact information uh, at a later point in time. However, today we're going to be talking about 
um, the, a very specific, very interesting topic, which is augmented reality, and specifically in the welding programs. Um, and so just before we even get started, I just wanted to touch on exactly what is augmented reality. I think that that's the first thing that we really have to, um, you know, clear the air and, and, uh, and, and just basically get it out there as to what it is. Uh, sometimes when I talk to people, uh, they say, oh, I don't have that I don't have thousands of dollars to buy augmented reality. Uh, it's too fancy for me, or I'm, you know, X years old and uh, too past that. My kids know about it, but I don't. Anyways, long story short, augmented reality is actually probably, depending on where your cell phone is, you may be within arm's reach of augmented reality because it is everywhere nowadays. Um, I guess basically what uh, what what make it breaking ground years ago was the game Pokemon Go. Uh, so people were playing this game and they they really didn't realize they were using augmented reality, but hence they were. Um, so we'll find augmented reality in a lot of uh, applications, especially multimedia rich applications, applications for uh, uh, taking photos or taking videos, but the AR, the augmented reality aspect, usually comes into the later part, which is uh, the editing portion. Uh, so again, if you have kids, they've taken a Snapchat selfie and they've put unicorns and rainbows in the background. Well, there you go. They're using a filter, which most probably is powered by augmented reality. Um, for those of you who watch sports, you see professional sports, they, they, you'll see an invisible line in football or hockey or baseball, they have the strike zone. These are again, examples of augmented reality. Navigation systems such as Google Maps, um, cosmetics. I mean, you can, you can see what kind of lipstick you'll, you know, if you uh, shade a lipstick before you buy it, uh, what kind of haircut you like before you go to the salon to get it cut. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, a real popular one now too is you can see what your house would look like with furniture uh, without even leaving your home. So Ikea uh, and other you know companies such as real estate companies and the list goes on and on. So again, it's, it, it's not really uh, you know, too expensive, depending on, you know, your day to day augmented reality uh, projects and, uh, and, 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 you know, what you, uh, you know, look into and experience on a daily basis. However, today, uh, talking about augmented reality uh, in welding, uh, it does have a higher price tag than a free app you can download on your phone. But again, we'll explore these, uh, these, these products. And, uh, and, and of course, we can always explore alternatives as well. I just want to state that even though I will be mentioning one company and two of their products, uh, this is not an endorsement whatsoever. Um, I've not worked with the company or, or anything whatsoever. I'm just going with what we uh, information that we know uh, about these products that are uh, that have been purchased and used in uh, centers on the French school board side. And so taking this information and taking it and sharing it back with you, uh, just, you know, to purely for educational purposes. So I just wanted to uh, get that uh, out of the way. Um, so without further ado, what would be the benefits of using um, augmented reality uh, technology in your classroom? Well, especially when it comes to welding, I'm thinking of, um, you know, the the time aspect, uh, the cost, you know, especially the cost aspect. So when you're when you're working on a weld, of course, uh, if there's, you know, even if it's properly done or uh, if it needs to be redone several times, uh, well, now we're talking about energy costs, we're talking about material costs, Whereas with augmented reality, well, you know, when we talk about AR, it's it's just a superimposed image that is not, you know, theoretically there. So you could just, you know, do it over and over again. Uh, in the AR field, we mentioned the magical reset button because if you make a mistake, you could just hit reset and and do it all over again. So um, another thing that comes to mind is, uh, you know, personally speaking, I don't know how confident I would be to pick up an actual uh, you know, instrument in my hand and to and, and to start it up right away. And so there's that uh, that hesitation, the confidence that some may have to do this. But with AR, you have a safe space, you know, such as the space that we're in right now, to actually experiment with the technology, uh, you know, knowing that you're not going to hurt yourself, you're not going to do harm to yourself or to others. Uh, so there is that aspect as well. So uh, getting the student initiated, engaged, and confident uh, before they actually take up the real equipment uh, is 
it, it is a real you know key and, and motivation boost as far as I'm concerned. And so there's a, there's a lot of other aspects too um, that we could look at. So, but but definitely uh, the time saving costs uh, of of this technology have proven uh, that, that it is a worthwhile investment, even though it does come with a um, heavier price tag. So without further ado, I just wanted to take a few moments to show you uh, what equipment uh, is being used. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and share my screen. There we go. So now we're looking at the Miller, uh, the uh, Miller Mobile Arc Augmented Reality Welding System. And this system here is the mobile version uh, of the welding system. And so it's not as sophisticated as its bigger brother, uh, but this uh, this one here has been uh, in use in uh, two centres de formation professionnelle, again, on the French side. And when you, when you look at this, uh, it is a very portable, um, uh, you know, a portable system compared to the more sophisticated larger one that I will show as well. Uh, so again, just into poking around, uh, I learned that the price tag is around 4,000 US uh, for this. And again, it's, it is an investment. It's an upfront cost, but the benefits uh, throughout the years uh, it definitely pays off for this kind of equipment. Uh, so this was the, again, the mobile version of it. And I'm gonna show a video of it too, um, of it actually in action. And so if I go here, this is the bigger brother of it. Uh, this here is the called the augmented arc versus the mobile arc. Uh, so this one here is really a more powerful, uh, really more in-depth system that that really shows the user uh, exactly what they're seeing during the weld as well. Um, and I'm going to show a, a video that, uh, well, I'll, I'll play the video, but I won't play it with sound. And when we watch this video, uh, you know, the, when they interview the student, the student will say, will say that uh, it, it even even using this system gives you feedback that you wouldn't necessarily get from uh, from from you know doing it in real life, right? Because what it'll tell you is you know how close you are or how far away. It, it really gives you immediate feedback about how the precision uh, that needs to go into when using this equipment. Uh, so it's almost like you'll have the teacher under your helmet, <laughs> like your coach right on your shoulder, giving you a play by play. And that's what this equipment here uh, has to offer uh, in terms of that. So really, really good stuff there. So I'll go here and I'll just play, start playing this video again. It's got no sound. So in this video here, you could really see it in action uh, as to what it would look like. So you have students who are basically scanning what looks like a QR code and it shows up on the uh, system right beside them as well. So you you could have a teacher giving feedback. You, if it's group work, you could have one student coaching the other one, and they, they switch back and forth. Uh, so it, I, again, it's a really, really great intuitive system. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and hold on a second. There's. I just want to show a little bit more of it in action. Uh, so here you can see that they have several units, and of course, uh, I can imagine for for budgetary um, you know reasons and constraints that we wouldn't be able to purchase a dozen of these for uh, one center in particular. Um, however, like I said, one could be used for more than one student. So when I'm thinking of other technologies like virtual reality, that's really one student who's in one environment, and and you know unless it's you know share on a on a board or other uh, display screen. It might not necessarily be seen, but here it does actually um, play out, and you can you can actually see it. So here the teacher is talking in the clip about uh, how it's cost effective, and again that precision piece that I mentioned too. Uh, so you can actually you know you can understand the benefits that outweigh um, doing it for the first time as opposed to using this simulator, if you will, and taking this into your hands um, for the very first time. So again, if I was to be a brand new learner in this field. Um, I'm not so confident because I'm not really handy with tools, or it's been a while since I've um, since, since since I've you know studied or or been in a program. I think that having some instrument like this would really boost my confidence, allow me to step up to the plate and to do it, uh, feeling a lot more confident going in and uh, using the real material uh, when time to do so. And lastly, I wanted to share. Uh, again, this video here, 
uh, so now this is more of a marketing thing, and uh, and this video here uh, is is a product that uh, unless I'm I'm a little bit uh, uh, dated. Uh, this this equipment has been said that it's not available to purchase in Quebec, so it might be a language. Um, something to do with with the instructions or whatnot. Hopefully this has changed. But anyways, I just wanted to show uh, that there is more than one product available. So when I hit play, um, I just wanted to show this video here because it, it does say some things that I'm talking about. It does give statistics, but again, uh, perhaps just uh, as a marketing uh, as a marketing uh, ploy, if you will. Uh, here we can see that 34% more certified uh, welders than traditional uh, mythology. Uh, and then after that, if we let it play, of course, it, it decreases um, time of real time in learning. So of course, there are enhancements, there are benefits. And then there are three other key components here. But again, these are just um, statistical, probably for advertisement purposes. So I know it's a little bit less. It says it's 84% less accidents. And one machine consumes 1 20th of the energy cost of regular uh, typical equipment that you would have in the classroom. So when I saw that 84% less incidents, uh, to me, that's also, um, I wouldn't call it like a, like a game changer or day and night, but you know, knowing that I have this personally, again, personally speaking, I have this notion, this mini fear of trying something for the first time, thinking that, you know what, it's, it's powerful. It's, uh, uh, it's something that I could get easily injured with. I'd be afraid to injure myself or injure others, but this technology really allows you to take it hands on with confidence and to go in and, um, and to do it, uh, you know, having having experienced this simulation beforehand. So I'll stop sharing my screen right now. Um, and I pretty much covered all of the bases. Uh, whenever I present something, I'm very passionate. So I usually do talk a mile a minute. So I hope that you were able to get all of this information. Um, and so if you have any questions or follow-ups, or maybe Robin, I'll let you interject and put the presentation back on. But uh, um, really, my uh, my presentation today as well is, uh, you know, with the CFP, now that the network has grown uh, exponentially, we went from two last year to over uh, 20 or, or just under 20 right now, uh, colleagues in the network. Uh, we hear a lot about the things that are working and, and in place in the French sector, um, but not really. And since this augmented reality for me, uh, once I started doing virtual reality uh, just before the pandemic hit, uh, augmented reality has been a little bit less off my radar, but now uh, it, it's really uh, a really keen interest of me. And so I'm, I'm really heavily invested and I would like to know what is going on, of course, in the English community. And so that's why I'm happy to see you all here um, and to share anything, any programs that you have similar in your centers. And I don't want to put you on the spot, Kelly, but uh, <laughs> if you've got anything, I would be very willing to hear what you've got. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you so much, James. Okay, so let's go ahead and put up the, the presentation. So just like a quick uh just just a quick recap of what james uh james showed us was our key takeaways are that uh augmented reality is it's 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 there's a misconception with that the concept and it's not just used in simulators uh it's fairly common and from the list of what uh james you mentioned it's actually very common because you'd mentioned, let me just go back to my little notes here, like uh, sports, those of you that watched San Francisco and, and the Steelers yesterday with all those marks on the screen, that's, that they are. Then of course, like who hasn't used the Ikea app to see what <laughs> stuff would look like, you know? So it's not just children's games. It's, it's, it's kind of everywhere. Google maps. I mean, it, so um, it is very common and it's not as expensive, although you know what, our phones do cost money, so you know, there is a cost involved, but it's definitely got a future. Um, and so from here, this is where we stop the recording. And this is where we're going to discuss some of the, some of the aspects of this uh, in teaching a trade. And Matthew James, <laughs> thank you, James, for coming. And thank you for presenting this incredibly interesting topic and this topic that has a huge future. 
uh, it's probably going to affect all of our trades. And we definitely think that it's something that, that, that we need to discuss because it's not only affecting our trades, it's going to affect how we teach our trades. For sure. For so sure. Thank you very much for coming. I think it's important too, that it's an emerging, you know, technology that is, you know, reaching more and more. Um, and we look at other technologies like AI that just seem to explode overnight from one day to the other, but this really is getting its place slowly but surely in industry and I, I really really do see a prosperous positive future for this tech uh, across all sectors okay. mm. all right thanks james thanks for you're coming. welcome all right ciao